So, we talked about uh, potential energy if the force acting on the particle is conservative the resultant for the only force then uh, we can define this uh, potential energy function V and then V plus kinetic energy this is constant. We call it law of or principle of conservation of uh, energy and how we define this V remember that F dot d L integration from a point A to B. Now, I can talk in terms of point A to B because this is conservative force and path is not important only the end points are important. This we define as V 1 or V A minus V B. So, if you have just a small displacement d L you can say this F dot d L is small change in the potential energy and that is here minus d V because it is initial minus final not final minus initial. So, it is minus of a small change in potential energy and this is it. Now, this gives me another beautiful equation. If I write in component form this will be f x and d L is d x. So, d L you can write as d x i cap plus d y j cap plus d z k cap and f you can write as f x i cap plus f y j cap plus f z k cap and if you take the dot product it is f x d x plus f y d y plus f z d z. So, this is f x d x plus f y d y plus f z d z this is d v. Now, if you take this y and z as constant which do not change only x changes then you have f x d x is equal to d v that means f x is minus d v by d x minus this is this minus here f x is minus d v d x provided d y is 0 provided d z is 0 y is constant z is constant and that is the partial derivative of v with respect to x. So, f x from this equation is minus del v del x and similarly f y is minus del v del y and f z is minus del v del z. So, if the potential energy function is known as a function of x y z I can get uh, the force components and if the force is known as a function of x y z then I can construct this uh, potential energy function. Since only the difference is defined so it will be arbitrary to the addition of some constant energy. So, with that much of uh, uncertainty which you have to choose uh, where you take potential energy to be 0 you get this V from F and F from V. So, these are things. You can take some more examples say u is equal to half k x square not u v v is equal to half k x square one dimensional motion entire motion is on the x axis. So, one dimension a one dimensional motion and if this is the case and you know when it it occurs it occurs in your simple harmonic oscillations just in the previous lecture we talked about that f is equal to minus k x. Okay, so, if you plot this v as a function of x, x can be positive, x can be negative. So, if you plot this v as a function of x, it will be a parabola. It will be a parabolic function half k x square. So, from this uh, diagram you can uh, work out if uh, you take the particle is here at this point at this x this is the origin. So, if the particle is here then the corresponding potential energy is here this is the point on the curve. 
this is the point on the curve and here if you draw a tangent here if you draw a tangent the slope of this is the slope of this is del v del x which in this case is dv dx and therefore your force is all one dimension so fx is same as f so that is minus of this dv dx and that is minus of this tan theta so from this diagram also it comes out that if uh, the particle is here on the positive side of the origin then the slope is positive this angle is less than 90 degree acute angle slope is positive tan theta is positive and the force is negative so force is towards the origin whereas if the particle is here and if you draw the tangent then uh, the tangent is like this this angle is more than 90 degree obtuse angle and the value of tan theta will be negative and therefore the value of s x will be positive. So, if the particle is somewhere here then uh, the force is positive tan theta is negative force is positive. So, force is in this direction. So, qualitatively many of the features uh, come from this diagram. So, the particle has to oscillate and all those then if you have uh, a particular energy which is fixed the total mechanical energy is fixed and since this is in energy units potential energy so i can find on this line what is the total mechanical energy of the motion i am interested in and if this is that point if this is that total energy u this is that total energy u then i if i draw a line here the total energy will always remain u and if the particle is somewhere here suppose the particle is somewhere here then this is the potential energy this much is the potential energy this much is the potential energy because this is the potential energy curve so as a function of x i am plotting potential energy so at this value of x this is the potential energy and this is the total energy so this is kinetic energy this this much is kinetic energy and kinetic energy plus potential energy is the total mechanical energy. So, now you can see if the particle is moving away from the origin the potential energy is increasing the kinetic energy is decreasing the total remains u and if the particle reaches at this point this particular point this particular point here call it x equal to a what happens this is the potential energy and this is also equal to the total energy mechanical energy and therefore the kinetic energy is zero so the particle comes to rest at this position the kinetic energy is decreasing here this much was kinetic energy then as it moved to the right kinetic energy decreased further decreased further decreased and finally it became zero so the particle is going away slowing down slowing down and then it comes to rest and then it turns back because the force is there. So, this is the turning point this is turning point from here the particle has to turn and once it turns it comes towards the origin kinetic energy keeps on increasing here the kinetic energy is same as the potential energy. So, the same as the total mechanical energy and so the potential energy is 0, but then uh, since it has kinetic energy it is moving towards left it keeps moving towards left it reaches somewhere here then somewhere here then somewhere here and finally at this place which is minus a when it reaches here once again the kinetic energy is 0. So, this is also turning point. these kind of analysis you can do once you know the shape of this potential energy curve many of the qualitative features of the motion you can derive from this. Let me take one more example suppose uh, you have a proton suppose you have a proton 
and you have another proton and suppose this proton is somehow fixed somehow this proton is fixed and this can move and suppose this is moving is so this distance is large and it is moving towards this uh, first proton like that it has some velocity v here v naught here and this distance is quite large this distance is quite large as a function of distance what is the potential energy you know that right if you have two charges q1 q2 the corresponding potential energy is q1 q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r so v is equal to let me say this is all x axis the entire motion is on x axis so it is right heading towards this proton and this i am taking as x axis so it will be proton proton q1 q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught and then x plus positive both are protons this is the potential energy as a function of x if you plot what happens if you plot it will be it will be a hyperbolic curve it will be a hyperbolic curve and then uh, at it is initially it is at a large distance and then the speed is v naught so initially whatever you call t equal to 0 or so initially r is or x is large large very large and uh, the uh, kinetic energy k is half m v naught square and this is also the total energy because for large x the this uh, potential energy is tending towards 0 so this is the total energy known suppose it is known and that total energy is somewhere here let us say this is that total energy and initially x is very large that means the particle is uh, is is somewhere here at a large x but the total energy the total energy is this much if the particle is here the potential energy is almost zero and kinetic energy is so this much is the kinetic energy and also total mechanical energy now the particle is coming towards this proton so x is decreasing so x is decreasing particle comes here 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 suppose it has come here when the particle is here then uh, this is the potential energy this is the potential energy that is the curve i have drawn potential energy versus x so this is potential energy total energy is fixed and therefore kinetic energy is this much this much is the kinetic energy decreased right because it is repelling so the speed will decrease kinetic energy will decrease kinetic energy is decreasing 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 and the particle comes here some x naught and then you are on the curve you are reaching this point so the entire energy is potential energy the kinetic energy is zero this is turning point the proton turns from here so it comes 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 and at some x naught it turns it turns and once it turns that is it there is only one turning point it will not turn again it will go to infinity now this description is uh, relevant for uh, fusion in sun fusion in sun you can set up your coordinate system with origin here and then do some algebra it is almost the same problem in this particular frame it is moving only in x direction this is at rest so almost similar mass you have to if you want to do the real quantitative analysis then you have to do something else because it is a non inertial frame remember if uh, you put your origin here so we will take care of that but essentially this is the case essentially this is the case the separation between the proton will be having a value x naught which will depend on the initial kinetic energy now in sun the temperature is some t 10 to the power 7 kelvin or so of that order 
and you can uh, assume that all the protons are moving with some thermal energies and that also you know the uh, random motion 3 k t by m square root that is the square root uh, RMS value of the speed and if you calculate this you get some value and with that value you can calculate how much should be the x naught. Different protons are of course moving with are moving with different velocities, different protons are moving with different velocities, but this is the average kind of thing some kind of root mean square. So, if you take this as the velocity calculate the kinetic energy and uh, find this x naught here that x naught turns out to be some few hundred uh, femtometers say 300 femtometers. Okay. The story is that this is not a complete picture because protons and protons also exert nuclear forces which come into play once the separation is of the order of femtometers. So, on this uh, scale I do not know where will be the femtometer suppose this is femtometer 2 3 femtometers. So, if uh, you are inside this if the separation is uh, in femtometer range then on top of this coulomb potential energy you also have potential energy corresponding to that attraction nuclear attraction and that is very very strong in femtometer region. So, this curve actually goes uh, like this. Okay. So, this is the nuclear uh, attraction range where the potential energy, energy has sharply gone down. The Coulomb potential energy is increasing, but it is sharply going down and it overcomes it, it uh, overtakes this uh, Coulomb energy and final potential energy is of this type. So, if proton and proton are to fuse fusion reaction is to take place in the core of the sun. The first thing is that two protons should fuse and after that uh, more protons will add to make a helium nucleus. But the first stage where proton and proton have to fuse it must come closer to this separation. Okay. So, it must reach somewhere here, but then x naught is 300 femtometer and this is uh, 1 or 2 or 3 femtometers. So, this is 300 femtometers. Okay. So, even if you say that uh, you have uh, some protons which are of uh, higher than this uh, having speed higher than this RMS which we calculate from here even then uh, you do not have uh, enough protons to reach here fuse and give that uh, wonderful energy that we receive from the sun. So, then there are some other phenomena barrier tunneling and all those things quantum mechanical phenomena which finally, gives uh, us required number of protons actually reaching here and then fusing and uh, creating that energy of the sun. Okay, so, these are the things we ca that you can do with uh, potential energy we will come across such things. Uh, again and again and now I want to introduce another parameter. So, we talked of linear momentum, we talked of potential energy and then from there this total mechanical energy, kinetic energy, another parameter which is important in mechanics and that is angular momentum. So, when we say angular momentum generally what comes to your mind is something is rotating and uh, uh, angular momentum should be some moment of inertia times angular velocity. So, it should be a rigid body or an extended body, but even for a single particle this angular momentum concept is is very useful let us see how. Angular momentum is the basically angular momentum is defined for a particle only and if you have extended bodies then uh, you add angular momentum of all those particles to get the total angular momentum, but the basic definition is for a particle. And what is that? The first thing is this angular momentum
of a particle about a given point which I will call origin. So, the angular momentum of a particle is uh, also associated with which point you are talking of. Particle may be somewhere else, but this point is uh, you have to choose somewhere. Okay? So, for linear momentum it does not uh, matter where you have taken your origin or what it is mass of the particle, velocity of the particle, local phenomena. But angular momentum particle is needed the parameters of particles are needed we will just see and then the origin or the point about which this angular momentum is to be calculated. So, definition includes this point and that is given by we write it L we write it L with a vector sign this is a vector quantity and this is R vector cross P vector. What is R vector? It is the position vector of the particle from the chosen origin this point this given point from that given point and P is the linear momentum of the particle. So, if you have an origin if this is that point and then at certain instant you have a particle of mass m and is moving in some direction say this direction this particle of mass m is moving in this direction with a speed v. The angular momentum of this particle at this instant about this point always whenever there is an angular momentum which point about which point. So, that should be known and that is from this origin you join that particle okay, call that vector as vector r construct this mass times velocity here and then take cross product of these two in this diagram if this is x axis this is y axis then uh, this uh, r cross p, p will be in this direction will be going into the board minus z direction. So, angular momentum is a vector quantity, it has a magnitude, it has a direction and the direction is perpendicular to this r vector and perpendicular to this linear momentum vector. So, that is angular momentum defined about that particular point. Okay? Correspondingly and the magnitude of course, is uh, mass times velocity and this distance r m v r and then the angle sin, sin of the angle between two. So, this is r vector, this is that p vector, this angle is theta, so sin of theta r magnitude of this r vector, magnitude of this momentum linear momentum vector and then multiplied by sin theta that is the magnitude. Correspondingly there is a similar quantity or similar looking quantity that also we define torque of a force. Once again about a given point. which we will take as the origin and that is written as tau vector we read it tau t a u Greek letter tau and then the vector sign is equal to r cross f and once again f is the force you want torque of a force. So, where is that force it is here and about a given point. So, you have a given point 
and from that given point to the point of application of force. Force is acting on some particle. So, position vector of that particle or position vector of application of this force. So, that is known as torque. Once again the similar story it will be perpendicular to this r vector, it will be perpendicular to this uh, f vector and along that perpendicular this side or that side will be decided by the rules of a cross product you know how to get the direction of this cross product and the magnitude will be once again r into f into sin theta similar picture here. So, that we define as torque and uh, very interestingly if you use this L is equal to R cross P and differentiate with respect to time dl dt that will be R cross dp dt and plus dr dt cross P. Now, dr dt is velocity vector and this p is mass times velocity vector cross product is 0 and this is dp dt is f. So, it is r cross f that means torque is equal to dl dt. For a single particle we get this equation very simple equation torque is dl dt if you have a single particle some force f is acting on it you have chosen an origin and from that origin you are calculating angular momentum as a function of time the particles moving here there there. So, the position vector is changing speed is changing direction of the velocity may be changing calculate how much is this d l d t that must be equal to that r cross f which is torque so, we will take from here.